Hey guys. Hey everybody. So this video is a little different than, well, a lot different than anything we've ever put out. Um, this is our marriage testimony. It is one that we believe needs to be out there. Our heart is that it would encourage you and exhort you and just, if anything, make you feel like you're not alone. So guys, a lot of times people ask us, um, what would you change different? What would you do different getting married? Um, we did premarital counseling years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing that we want to share with our testimony is what we would have changed yeah. mm -hmm. because we're hoping that by you hearing our testimony, couples out there, those who are either married, getting married, mm -hmm. thinking about marriage. Or in a similar situation and just don't see a way out. Yeah. We want to share our testimony with you guys and in hopes that this would bless you guys and it would strengthen mm -hmm. your marriage if you are married or it would strengthen yeah. the walk that you have with the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. as you're going into marriage. One thing that I had struggled with um, pretty much all my life um, up to this point was pornography. That was something that I was introduced yeah. Um, really young age. Man, I think I must have been five. Uh, I remember one of the first things that mm -hmm. I saw was from video games, um, from trailers of movies. Mm -hmm. um, you name it. Yeah, you name it. I mean, 90s shows, early 2000s shows, right. it was all like sexually laced. Yeah. Like there was always sexual jokes in the show. There was always hints at sexual things. So really you're inundated with it yeah. from a young age. And for me, yeah. um, I struggled with that. And this was a... Um, this was a struggle for years. I'm talking from a kid all the way until, man, last year. Um, this is the part of the testimony that we have. First off, um, what I wish I would have did different. Mm -hmm. yeah. Though I didn't do it different, we still have a God that knows how to redeem, knows how restore. to love, yeah. knows how to restore, Good. knows Good. how to make things new. Yeah. And that's the testimony that we have. So a few years ago, knowing, now you guys know that I, I struggled with this for so long. A few years ago, the Lord asked me to deal with this. And he told me a while ago to make a video uh, about this. He said, if you want to get freedom, you must do this video. Um, not this particular video, but you mm -hmm. must do this video if you want to get set free from this. And please, 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 please. For those who are either married, getting married, or those who are already married, yeah. obedience to God is so important. Mm -hmm. So important. So because, just being honest with you guys, I was disobedient, I disobeyed. It consumed me so much so that I knew what I should have done and I didn't do it. Um, last year was one of the roughest years. Actually, yeah. the roughest year we've ever had. I was unfaithful to my wife. Um, the toughest year I ever had. Ever yeah. in all of my life, I took something that was meant to be fantasies. I was at this place in my mind where I was like, I need to make this a reality because I was so consumed by it. And I began to seek after this thing. And I stepped out on my wife uh, multiple times trying to chase after something that wasn't real. Mm. All because I never dealt with something that was brought to me yeah. as a boy. This is the part that I pray catches some of you guys' attention. Don't think because you're going to get married, mm. because you're going to have children, yeah, because you feel like, oh, look mm. at me. Or I'm you're at someplace this. in your career. Right. Or, right. hey, even yeah. your career. Mm -hmm. Yep. Do not think that that is a strong enough reason for you to fight. I have to say that mm. because I wrestled with this so long, I always thought that I can do it. I can do it. I got right. this. I got this. And I never actually sought the help that I really, really needed. What should have been dealt with years ago, I brought to the marriage mm -hmm. and completely devastated my wife with this. And I know it was tough for her, but I knew we needed to come here to Arizona. And the Lord spoke that to us, that we needed to come here yeah. to Arizona. Yeah, before anything was found out. Yeah. Before anything. Mm -hmm. And when we got here, 
I don't really think we really knew what to expect. No. We begin to start getting major breakthroughs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and I, I didn't know. And I think that's the thing is when we get so okay in our Christianity, when we feel like we're okay, when we go to church on Sunday and then watch Netflix the rest of the week, we think we're fine. And I think I didn't know that I was bound in religion. Like I didn't know there were certain things that had a hold on me until we got here. And the Lord began to speak to me about the way that I saw him. And the way that I boxed him in a lot of things, and that's bondage. So a lot of times we think like, oh, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I'm not, you know, addicted to pornography, I'm not all these things. But it's like, but you're still bound. And I think that was the major thing that the Lord revealed to me is thinking you're okay when you're not is bondage. So yeah, there was a lot of breakthrough here. Is that what you think you would have did different? Oh, I would have done marriage? differently. Yeah. So what I would have done differently, I would have dealt with my need for control because that was the most devastating part of all of it is I couldn't control anything he did. Mm. All of what he did was behind my back. It was all out of my control. And that was the most devastating part is I couldn't protect myself from him. I couldn't prevent his actions. I couldn't prevent him from hurting me in that capacity. And I think that was a major issue because you can't do that with anybody. I mean, in any relationship you have, in any intimate relationship, you're vulnerable. Mm. And I didn't like that. I didn't ever liked the idea of being so one with somebody that they could hurt me in that way. So then automatically I close up, you know, after that happened and I was very closed off. For a long time I was very cold, I was very distant. And I mean, I know some of you may say, well, yeah, rightfully so. At the same time, that's not how you heal. Right. And so I would have dealt with that because being raised in a household with a single mother, um, she did an amazing job. And at the same time, there was a lot of control in that household because she had to be the one that did everything. She had to be the one to um, handle everything in the house. So even in a marriage, in a two-person marriage, I had a single mom mentality. And so mm. I would have dealt with that a long time ago. Yeah. So, and I would yeah. say um, <clears throat> we walked through some pretty heavy stuff um, mm -hmm. this last year. Yeah, it's hence we dropped off of social media yeah. for a long time to deal with us to yeah. rebuild our foundation. And I know a lot of people have reached out like, where'd you guys go? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. all of a sudden you moved and then you left and I don't talk to you anymore. I don't see you anymore. And we promise it's not personal. We love you, all of you so much. And we just needed time to heal, to rebuild our foundation that crumbled together and really just focus on our family and our marriage away from everything. So, yeah, and I think mm -hmm. the Lord actually restored a lot of that because yeah. we were kind of, this may shock some of you guys, we kind of felt like we were drifting away from each other at yeah. different points. It wasn't just it wasn't just the infidelity for sure. It was before that. As a mom, I would focus so much on the children and so much on pleasing him that I would lose sight of him. Like I would just want him to be so happy even if it didn't involve me. And that's where it got really toxic because I would focus so much on the children and make sure that I was doing everything again, single mom mentality, that I would leave him out of the picture. So then when he would come home from work, I would be so busy cooking or cleaning or getting them ready for bed that I forget to even say like, hi, how are you? How was your day? I love you. I miss you. And I missed it. One thing for sure that we... And we took our eyes off of was the Lord. Yes, it was God. When God becomes an option Ooh. and not a necessity, yeah. you're in for some problematic situations. Mm -hmm. I would say this to any man of God and even woman of God, because I know women of God have yeah. certain, these certain different struggles and everything yeah. else. Mm -hmm. Seek the presence of God. First yes. off, get deliverance. Deliverance yeah. is very, Key. very vital. One thing that we found was a group of believers who walked through some of the same stuff. Yes. Worse Literally, yeah. than what we walked through. But so many people were open and yeah. willing to share. And that was the Lord. And this is why it's so important. Like we were planted at a beautiful church in Washington. And the Lord was so faithful to plant us here at this church. Is he does it on purpose. Yeah. So when he's telling you to go somewhere like, oh my God, my God. Like it's so important to go. Because these were people we didn't even know that in like three minutes of meeting them would tell us our testimony right. of, you know, infidelity, drug use, alcohol abuse, domestic violence. I mean, you name it. And these are people that are up at the altar. 
they're like worshiping and, and look perfect. And then you find out they just got out of jail like, you know, 10 months ago. And you're like, what are you? And I say that to say it's like the, the enemy really had me bound when we were, when I first found out everything um, for about a month or so. I didn't want to tell anybody. I didn't want to talk about it because I felt like, maybe not a month, no, maybe about a week or so. I didn't want to tell anybody because I was underneath the lie that mine is the worst. I was like, I don't want to be that wife. Like, oh, I do not want to be that wife. And, and nobody's going to have a worse testimony than mine. I feel foolish. I feel this. I feel that. But it's like the reality is it was pride. Yeah. Because had I not opened up, had I not asked for prayer when I was so broken, I wouldn't have been healed. And that's where God works the most is in our humility. So though it sounds good to say, I'm fine, I'm good, I don't need any prayer, we can handle it on our own, that's just pride dressed up in a better outfit. It really teaches you to humble yourself, not only before the Lord, most importantly, but before people. And really take on a mentor mentality of like, hey, I've, I've never walked through this, he's never walked through that. Right. I didn't know what it looked like to heal as a wife. He didn't know what it looked like to heal as a husband coming out of something like this that's devastating. At the same time, we really came underneath people who had walked through it and were able to guide us. Yeah. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I 100% um, agree with that. And mm -hmm. we were very fortunate and very blessed that, that the Lord shined his face upon us because he didn't have to. He did not. I just have to brag on God. Something that I struggled with, I'm 34 as of this video. Mm -hmm. Something I struggled with since like the age of five. He literally Come delivered on. me in a single moment. Mm -hmm. He delivered me because I was desperate mm -hmm. enough. Yeah. I think of the woman with the issue of blood yeah. who was desperate enough to let like nobody all. get in her way. And that's how I felt, yeah. was so desperate. Um, I remember being at the altar and I cried out. There's a great man of God at the church who sings phenomenally. And I'm sitting here trying to sing like this man. And there's a he brother. He does sing amazing. He does yeah. sing amazing. Mm -hmm. And there's a brother who's standing next to me. And I'm listening to this man of God. Oh, yeah. He's not trying to sing. He's not note. trying to hit a single note. No, he doesn't care. But I'm listening to this man of God cry out. And he's crying. I'm talking with everything in him. And I understood the Lord saying, we are to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with mm. all of our soul, soul, all of our strength, all of it. All of our all strength. Of it. Yeah. I listened to this man cry out for God for mm -hmm. a fresh baptism, for a fresh touch. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, wait a minute. I'm coming in here with the problem. This man of God is like doing phenomenal in his life. Why am I acting too cool? Why mm -hmm. am I acting like yeah. everything's good when I just dealt the craziest blow to my marriage? So I cried out for God and everything changed. Mm -hmm. There was, there was uh, the pastor got up there and she gave a altar call and she said, um, you know, if anybody wants to be filled with the Holy Ghost and yeah. fire, mm -hmm. raise your hands. And when she said that, I said, well, <laughs> you know, I can speak in tongues, but I was like, with everything I just did, I don't have the fire of God. So I raised my hand and when I raised my hand, I got surrounded by like nine or 10 guys. Yeah, yeah you got jumped. <laughs> and they all laid yeah. hands on me mm -hmm. and the fire of God came down, burnt all that stuff up. Come on. Then mm -hmm. uh, when I finally was able to make my way to the chair, <laughs> the glory of God was so heavy on me. I, I responded to an altar call to rededicate my life, mm -hmm. and then I got rocked again. I do say that to boast to brag in God. Come on. He will meet you at your place yes. of desperation. Yes, at your cry. So I speak this mm -hmm. to you guys, that if you are not married, going into marriage, you know that you know that you know there yeah. are things that God has been telling you to work on mm -hmm. or that you need to work on. Get desperate enough to say, yes. I will not allow this in my marriage. I will not allow this to touch my future children. Yeah. And if you're already married and you're going through something similar, it doesn't even have to be adultery or infidelity. It no. can be anything. addictions or anything. anything. Anything that you put ahead of God. Anything. Cry out. Yeah. He is faithful to respond. Yeah. He is faithful to listen. To deliver. He is faithful. And so we just hope, we pray yeah. that our testimony will, will touch you guys. Yeah. You know, I watched my wife mm -hmm. being heartbroken. 
I watched her face and her countenance changed and, mm -hmm. and I seen all of that. But let me tell you, I also seen the moments of when God touched her. And it was like, I remember one time she walked into the room and um, she took me aback. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. unless you've seen this, I can't explain this. It was like God stripped that was bare. Yeah. every mask mm -hmm. that she put on to mm -hmm. cover up anything and everything that was going on. And not just mm -hmm. with our marriage, but even in, in life in life and personal. Yeah. And it happened to me too. I remember you were telling me, you were like, your face looks so different. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's the thing too, is I would just speak to, you know, the wives and the husbands who, if you know your spouse's addiction um, on whatever level it may be, as devastating as it is and as heartbreaking as it is, I'm not, you know, negating that, it is so vital that you look within yourself in this time. Because had I not done that, I've gotten bitter, angry, cold. I, I might have left my husband. Who knows what I would have done in my flesh and my feelings. But when I was really able to mourn and grieve the loss of, because that's what it really was, is I was grieving for a little while of the loss of a marriage freed of infidelity. And once I was able to truly give myself to that wholeheartedly of like, hey, I'm grieving. Like this is a grief process. God began to work on me. So I would even say, um, you know, just to agree with you is that we have to be open to God removing those layers and God working on us. We, you know, men or women, we can't get stuck in like, well, they did this. They hurt me. They did that. Exactly. Because it's unforgiveness, which turns into bitterness, which literally rots your bones. Yeah, so that was me literally yielding to the process of the Lord of saying, God, take my focus off of him. And it's not easy. It's not an overnight thing. It's hard not to focus on them and the hurt that they cause at the same time to get better on both sides. Both people have to focus on themselves mm -hmm. because if I'm only focusing on him and what he did, I'm not getting better, but he is. So that was really a part of that process too, of getting bare before the Lord of like, hey, help me too. You know, though I may not have gone as far as that, what did I do that didn't please you, God? What did I, what have I done in this marriage, even in this life that I fell short? Like reveal that to me so I can work on myself. There's just a lot, like that we're giving like a synopsis of like a year process. Like yeah. this has been, and this is why we're able to communicate like this. So I would say is take the time to heal both of you together in yeah. whatever capacity that looks like. And for us, it looked like, like we said, staying off social media, kind of removing ourselves from everybody just to focus on ourselves. So we would love to, you know, come alongside with you guys, pray with you guys. If you don't want to comment, if you want to keep it personal, you're welcome to message Drell or me, uh, men and women. Um, we would just love to pray with you guys and believe for your marriage because that's the thing that really got me through, as our pastor had said from the pulpit, the next generation is so worth fighting for. Mm -hmm. And had we given into flesh, had we listened to the world or what's supposed to happen after infidelity, we'd have, we'd have divorced yeah. and we wouldn't be here right now. Instead, we chose to fight for the sake of our children, for the sake of a generation to not hand them brokenness that they don't know how to process. Right. If you have a testimony, please share it. Mm -hmm. um, we would love to hear it. The world needs to hear it. Mm -hmm. The word of God tells us that they overcame him. By the blood of the lamb. And. The word of their testimony. And they I did love not verse. love their life. Ooh, unto the death. End. Ooh. Oh, that yes. last part's a little hard to stomach. Unto death. To the end. Wait, unto death. <laughs> oh. Share your testimony. Yes. We got fought so hard yes. to not share this yes. testimony. So Several we times. know yep. and we pray, Lord. That this testimony would go forth, yes. heal and touch your people, yes. and open up the floodgates to more testimonies, yes. more victories, yes. Father. Because the, it's so good. I just have to say that it's so good on the other side. Like our marriage is the best it's ever been, ever. Yeah. And it sounds wild and like, how could you even guys get through that? But it's only the Lord. We can't on our own strength. One of the craziest stories that we knew the Lord was going to restore our marriage was yes. mm -hmm. um, this had been a few weeks, maybe months, actually. Yeah, maybe a few months, yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, my wife was still hurting. I remember I asked the Lord one night and I said, uh, Lord, um, is our marriage going to work? When I said, Lord, if our marriage is going to work, mm -hmm. I need you to wake me up. 
before my alarm goes off, which was at 4.30 in the morning. And I'll never forget uh, my wife, who was very pregnant, at very the time. pregnant, <laughs> like at the eight time. months pregnant. Yeah, she mm -hmm. got out the bed, went to the went, bathroom, went yeah. to the bathroom, as pregnant women do. And then I said, "Hey, Teresa, what time is it?" And what did you? No, say? you were way more urgent than that. I was like, "What time is it? What time is it? Get my phone!" <laughs> I was like, "I'm still kind of mad at that point." So I'm like, "I don't want to get your phone." <laughs> was not. I wasn't perfect. What time is it? I handed him his phone and I was like, it's 411. And the Lord spoke to me, 1 John 411. God changed my heart in a moment. And he'll do that for you guys too. We believe it. So we speak 1 John 411 over every marriage, mm -hmm. every pre-marriage mm -hmm. that's going. We just speak 1 John 411 over you. And we pray the blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ on you guys. We love you guys. Until next time, we'll see you in the next video. Love you guys.